The release of the Biostar X370 motherboard has made it possible for many ITX builders to build a really nice and powerful Ryzen system in a small form factor case. But throwing a cooler like this that comes included is really not ideal if you're running a really compact system. So typically you would use a cooler like the Noctua NHL9i, one of the most popular, if not the most popular low profile cooler. But up until recently, there was not a mounting kit for it that fit AM4 coolers. Thankfully, Noctua has a free upgrade kit that you can pick up and we're gonna check it out today. Okay, so opening up the box, we're greeted by a little note from Noctua. Very nice touch. And the two feet that you will connect to your AM4 bracket. Oops. Bottom bracket. And the screws. So here is the original NHL9i, and as you see on the other side, it's got the two brackets here for socket 1151, and it works really nicely. It just has simple thumb screws. These just pop off the old ones and pop these on here. Nice and simple, and you have a brand new cooler for a brand new platform. So unlike Intel on Ryzen, each cooler needs a back plate. So it's just a metal back plate with this nice shiny piece here to protect the motherboard. And then you have your four screws right here that just go from the underside and screw into the feet like this and you're all good. Now the Ryzen CPU, this is a Ryzen 7 1700. It has a decent amount more surface area than the 7700. Intel CPU I was using prior to this with this cooler. They're both 65 watts, but I'm curious to see how this performs. This is an eight core processor, obviously, uh, eight core 16 threads compared to four cores, eight threads. So it should be interesting to see if this guy can handle it, especially when you compare it to the larger cooler that it came with it. For thermal paste, I'll be using the Noctua NTH1. This is my favorite thermal paste at the moment. It's really good, uh, you can't go wrong if you're looking for so an upgrade from some crappy thermal paste, you should check this out. Or if you're just picking up some additional paste, this is always a good option. So I use a little more than I normally would on an Intel CPU, just because this is a larger CPU with a little more service area, so hopefully that works out. Now the one bad thing about this cooler and using it with the AM4 board is that you can only orient it one way or two ways, this way or that way. The airflow really should be going diagonally, but you can only have it going this way because of the position of the brackets. So we'll see if that has an effect on cooling long term. I'm gonna set it so that the direction of the air is that way at least going away from the RAM. Hopefully that should be okay. Now having an ultra compact cooler for your AM4 build is great and all, but if it can't actually cool your CPU, what's really the point? To test it out, I ran the Furmark CPU burn-in test that stresses all 16 threads uh, up to 100% for 15 minutes each. Started out at the stock settings at 3.2 gigahertz on all cores. 
then I moved up to 3.5 gigahertz with the Ryzen Master overclock utility. Then lastly, 3.75 gigahertz. I didn't want to push it any further with that. I was seeing some system instability with this particular chip, so I left it at that. At stock settings, I was seeing an idle temp of 34 degrees Celsius with a max of 57 Celsius under full load at 68.5 max watts pulled from the wall. So that's pretty good. With the 1700 overclock to 3.55 gigahertz, I saw idle temps of 39 degrees and max temps at 100% load of 69 degrees. That was pulling 90.66 watts from the wall. And finally, overclock to 3.75 gigahertz, I saw idle temps of 44 degrees Celsius and max temps of 81 degrees. That was pulling a whopping 102.92 watts from the wall. So overall, I think those were really solid temps, especially if you're going to be running at stock settings or putting a slight overclock on your Ryzen 7. Uh, I'm sure if you use the higher end chips, the 1700X or the 1800X, you would see a little better efficiency there. Uh, the 1700s just are not really efficient when you start overclocking them. But at stock settings, as you saw, it hovered right around at 65 watt TDP, peaking at around 68 watts, and that's that's really good. And the temperatures were really rock solid. Uh, you don't have to ramp the fan speed up to a thousand, you know, just to get it to cool it's the CPU. It was really manageable. At idle, I had it running at its lowest setting, so that's about 860 RPM. And then at the max, it was only spinning up to around 1600, 1200, 1600 RPM, which is really great. It was uh, not loud at all. So overall, I was really impressed with this cooler setup on a Ryzen AM4 board. For around the stock settings up to 3.5, 3.6 gig gigahertz, you should be totally fine with the NHL9i and the AM4 mounting bracket, which is actually quite shocking, to be honest. I was shocked by the amount of performance that you could get from such a small mini ITX board, a, a full Ryzen 7 chip, and this tiny compact cooler. So if you have an NHL 9i or you want to grab one and say have a cooler that can fit on both 1151 socket Intel motherboards and the newer AM4 boards and you just want to pick up the upgrade kit, you just have to go to the website Noctua. I'll drop a link below for their actual website form submittal page if you already have the cooler and an AM4 board and you can submit your info for them to send out a free kit so that you can upgrade your cooler. Simple as that. So if you want to see a little more information on a the kit, the cooler, or the overclocking, I will drop a link to the article below in the comments as well. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you like the video. I'm Jay. This is Tech Everything, and I'll see you next time.